we have proven that here in California that we, the people, not the politicians, are still the boss. A thunderous response for Howard Jarvis, the 75-year-old millionaire who's been campaigning for 15 years against taxes. This time, Jarvis has done it. Succeeded with America's first tax revolution since tea was tipped into Boston Harbor. His scheme, labeled Proposition 13, will cut taxes in half, slash California's state income by $7 billion, and provoke similar revolts throughout the United States. Oh, I gotta have a peanut farm to do that. <laughs> very much. Mr. Jarvis's Proposition 13 is no new idea. It's been rejected three times already by California voters, but there are several reasons why it's become so popular now. Proposition 13 gets much of its support from places like this, the San Fernando Valley, with its affluent suburbs of Los Angeles. Inflations hit the standard of living particularly hard here, and soaring property taxes have been a major factor. The seeds of revolution were sown when it was announced that property values were to be reassessed so that the taxes could be increased yet again. That, together with a growing dissatisfaction with the way taxes were being spent, was enough to give Proposition 13 a clear 2-1 victory during governorship elections. For many here, there was hardly a choice. The property tax burden had become unbearable. House taxes on this home last year were a weighty $1,900 a year. This year, they would have trebled. The Whittemore family have no doubt that they did the right thing in voting for Proposition 13. How much of a victory do you consider this vote has been for people like yourselves? I think it's the greatest. It is, it's, we're telling the government, the city government, the state government, that we are tired of paying higher taxes and we're tired of supporting the system and all of the affiliated costs of running a government. It's too much government for the money. But what do you say to people who say that as a result of your vote, you are now going to be faced with um, failing school system, uh, understaffed police, uh, not enough people to clean the streets? Those are all hysteria uh, political tricks, I feel. I realize that there will be a hardship, but what it means is, is that we are going to have to work harder. The United States citizen has not been working hard for the last 10 years. Our productivity has fallen off. Our, our morale has gone down. It just means we've got to work harder. We've got to do more. We've got to be more united. If it's a victory for the ordinary family, it's a headache for the administrators. With property taxes cut in half, there'll be much less income for city halls to spend on essential services. In Los Angeles alone, the shortfall will be almost a billion dollars a year. And among cutbacks that can't be avoided, will be the loss of 28,000 jobs from city and county payrolls. Not surprisingly, the Finance Committee here is meeting daily to take critical decisions about where the axe will fall. Mr. Brown, how big a Marvin Browd is chairman of the LA Finance Committee. Well, I think the consequences of Proposition 13 are constitute a major social, economic, and political revolution. Uh, and it's all starting right here in Los Angeles. I think it will occur throughout California and throughout the United States, and perhaps throughout the world. But it's beginning right here, and we're coping with it, and nobody wants to listen. And the elected officials don't want to face up and listen to the bad, painful news, and uh, the citizenry don't want to listen either to the bad, painful news about yep. what lowered government expenditures mean. What is the bad painful news? What is it going to mean? It will means that we will have to have substantially uh, lower level of uh, service and many programs uh, will have to be cut out. I think we can tolerate uh, 10, 20 percent cut. I think there's that much give in the system. But when you start cutting uh, 30, 40, 50 percent uh, then you're undergoing uh, really a major uh, change. Where is the axe going to fall hardest? Who's going to be hit most? I think that it is going to be on the society as a whole. It isn't going to fall on anyone. Who's going to hit most when uh, the streets aren't cleaned and it's a little dirtier? 
who's going to hit most if uh, uh, the police response time is a little less? Uh, it's a question of the whole society, and it's a question of how do you have an orderly way to decide these things? How are you going to make this is a real challenge to the democratic decision-making process. The city's police force is already one of the most undermanned in America. Now it's being told to trim its budget by $38 million. Not only will recruiting stop, but a thousand existing officers will have to go. Drugs, muggings, robbery and murder are all part of the violent scene in Los Angeles. With fewer men to fight it, the city's police chief has warned that the cuts amount to a calamity. The fire service too expects big trouble. California's chief has said it will set his efficiency back 50 years, while fire hazards will climb at an even higher rate. Similar cutbacks will hit health and welfare, but the brunt of the economies will be borne by schools. <laughs> 18,000 teachers in Los Angeles and a further 18,000 helpers have been warned that their jobs are in jeopardy. In California as a whole, property tax meets almost three quarters of the state education bill. The loss expected, thanks to Proposition 13, amounts to almost three quarters of a billion dollars. Stunned education officials describe the scale of the problem as completely crippling. Of course, no one wants to see children suffer, but supporters of Proposition 13 say it needn't come to that. In fact, they claim that trimming the fat off the education budget should actually increase efficiency and the standard of schooling. Mr. Springer, just how Hank Springer, a teachers' union leader, doesn't see it that way. I think it's as serious a thing as ever in the history of this country. I think that uh, we're seeing uh, the absolute collapse of a school system in Los Angeles. We're looking at uh, laying off two-thirds of the teachers in the city. We've lost all of our money more than half of our money. And unless we get the money back, and it looks very grim at this point in time, we're not going to have a school system. What do you intend to do about it? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We have decided that if the people don't want schools, that we're going to accommodate them, and they're not going to get schools. Our people go out next Friday. The schools are going to shut down, and we're not going to open again until we get the money to pay all of our teachers to go back to work. I'm accepting no cuts whatsoever. We're shutting the system down and it's gonna stay down. Do you think that the people who voted for Proposition 13 had really thought it out and had worked out what possible cuts it might mean in services? I don't think they cared. I think that they were so angered by their property taxes that they lost all reason. And uh, that being the case, uh, we're gonna to have to make them understand what they've done. We're the ones who are going to pay the price of that. The teachers are not going to teach summer school this summer. That means $30 million that they're not going to have. We're going to continue to be unemployed. We're not going to be working for weeks and months, and I mean months. And someday, maybe the people will wake up. And when they wake up, then we'll go back to teaching. Whether it's school kids or the two million people living on California's welfare aid, everyone will somehow feel the effects of Proposition 13. Taxes may be going down, but what's the price? What will the revolution demonstrate? Is it going to prove that, in fact, local government, state government, was overfat, overfed, and wasteful? I think that the results will show that there was some of that. I think we'll show that we can survive 10 to 20 percent uh, cuts and in that sense we were not as productive and as creative and as energetic. 
It'll also show, I think, that you need some fundamental reforms in order to make it more productive and creative. You've got to change the civil service system. You can't have all these mandated programs that if you want to, in effect, really reduce government expenditures, you've got to make some fundamental changes, and everybody's going to have to wake up and recognize that. But it's slow and it's painful.